It's that time again. It is time for the quarter three Russell recap where I'm gonna break down everything that happened in our local real estate market in the last quarter. And of course, I'm gonna be touching on the hurricanes that have tragically affected our area. If you wanna talk more about local real estate, be sure to reach out to me. And also you'll wanna hang on till the end of this video because I'm gonna give you some bold predictions about what we're gonna see at the beginning of 2025 and beyond. I hope you enjoy it. So like I said, we're gonna look back at last quarter and we're also gonna include the hurricane events in the last quarter, even though they were the first half of October. And we're gonna kind of look at what happened and then we're gonna kind of look at why I think it happened and then where I think things are going. So let's dive into exactly what happened over the third quarter for Sarasota County real estate. If you take a look at this chart, you can see this is a four year kind of zoomed out picture and the bars on the right side of the screen that get higher, that is our inventory. And so you can see during COVID, you can see that sales actually outpaced inventory and the sales are the dark green little bars. And then the pending is the red line that goes across this graphic. And so you can see starting in about maybe September of 2022, about two years ago, we started to gain inventory in our market. And you can see that it has been steady, steadily gaining for, you know, two years now. And it has been specifically acute in 2024. So we have a market where our overall inventory is up almost 40% in the last year. That kind of tells the story. Anytime you have more supply, it makes it a little bit more difficult to sell. Now, if you look at this slide, which was published by our local realtor association. This shows single family homes and condos broken apart into two different categories, but you can see that closed sales in both categories in Sarasota County were down about 20% from September of 23 to September of 2024. So that's a pretty big deceleration. You can also see something really interesting, I think actually, is that as prices are going down, inventory is going up. The one thing that we're not seeing change a whole lot is pricing. Our median price went down less than 1% year over year. So while we're seeing things slow, we're not really seeing pricing come down, which is a welcome relief. So let's dig a little bit deeper and let's look at this slide. And this is the total Sarasota County MLS recorded sales on this chart. And if you look at the end of the chart, you can see in September of 2024, we had 715 total sales, which is pretty much by far the lowest number for any month out of this five year snapshot, except for September of 2022. So. Look, it's no surprise that things slow down and going into August, September, and even October. That is a normal cycle every year in our real estate market. It's the off season, so we expect that. But what we're seeing is a much more dramatic change in the slowdown that does have some reasons behind it. If you look at this next slide also, you'll see more evidence of what I previously stated that here it shows the median price across single family homes and condos together as $427,000. You can see that that number has fluctuated a little bit in 2024, but really for the past two years from mid 2022 till now, that number has been within four or five percentage points. Fairly constant, fairly stable. We're still seeing lots of good sales. So that is what happened. The question is, why did it happen? Why are we seeing this slowdown? And why are we seeing a market that's good you know, prices are stable, but some homes are not flying off the shelf. So it's a good market right now, not a great market. And I don't know how long it will be till we see another great market or even crazy market like we saw two years ago. But for me, I'll take good trending towards great, which is what I think we have going on. So what are the four reasons in my mind that we saw this deceleration? We've talked a lot about this. Number one, is the cost. So barrier to entry in terms of pricing is high and rates up until the September meeting of the Fed had done nothing but go straight up for a period of a few years. 
We got our first rate cut, which seems like that happened months ago, but it was only about a month ago. We've been through a lot, but prices and borrowing costs have started to ease and that has really gotten home buyers kind of back in the game. The second reason is politics, right? So the election has not yet happened while I'm filming this. We're still about two weeks out and people do not thrive on uncertainty. So once we get this election season behind us, things calm down, people accept the results, begin to move on. We know what we have in place in the federal government for the next four years. People will just start to make their decisions and feel comfortable with that. That will be huge for us. The third thing that I think has been a drag on the condo market, specifically older condo buildings, and we've talked about this a lot, is that with the new condo laws since the seaside collapse, the condo boards all have to have their engineering studies done by the end of this year. And so I think as we go into 2025, People are gonna have a much clearer picture of what needs to happen or not happen in individual condominium projects before they make a buying decision. And I think that's something that has been holding off sales. So that's another barrier to entry that's been removed. And then the fourth cause of this deceleration is natural disasters. So the statistics for September would definitely be post Debbie where we had you know, catastrophic flooding in a lot of areas. So that slowed down the market. And now we've had Helene and subsequently Milton, which I think are going to continue to put a damper on what would be the normal pace of activity. So the market has been surprisingly resilient, gaining inventory, prices holding fairly steady, and we've had a ton of headwinds. And I think we're right at the point where a lot of those headwinds are going to start to be changing. So what are my predictions for the fourth quarter? I think the word for the fourth quarter is going to be recovery and stabilization. So let's take a look at this slide that shows the mortgage rate projections going forward for the end of 24 and 2025. And you can see that the average of all three show rates starting next year, hovering around 6%, which is kind of what I've been seeing. I've seen a few loans close a little higher, a few close in the you know, high to mid fives, which has been nice. And we see the projection coming down to approaching five and three quarters or just below that by the end of 2025. So the rates are gonna kind of stabilize, starting to trend down. I think people just know what to expect there, which is a good thing. You can see that on my next slide, this is the chief economist for Wells Fargo, Charlie Doherty. He says that lower financing costs will likely boost demand by pulling affordability crunch buyers off the sidelines. And I feel like I've already started to see that a little bit and that's what we're going to continue to see regarding rates. We're gonna see politics stabilize, as I mentioned. We're gonna see these condo projects be more in compliance, assuming they made it through the storms okay. And then the big part of Q3, or Q4 rather, recovery is going to be people finalizing their preparations their repairs, and all the decisions that they need to make from the hurricanes. People are faced with ascertaining the cost of the repairs, dealing with insurance companies, deciding do they want to stay in an older home that's been destroyed? Do they want to go? Is it a home that can be rebuilt under current law? Is it a home that needs to be torn down? And what I have seen is resilience and strength in our community in terms of how quickly some of these things are happening. And I know that I know that the full recovery from Helena Milton will take years, not months, but I think we're gonna have a lot of decisions made in the coming months of what people are doing and why. And what that's going to do is that's going to cause an effect of the market moving forward. So for 2025, I am actually optimistic I think that a lot of these headwinds and barriers are gonna be removed. You're going to see a lot of people that have made decisions post storms, post elections, post concerns about rates. All these things that have been holding us back are now going to be removed and people are going to want to make decisions and make moves. So I think we're going to see more velocity in the market. How the pricing, especially on the barrier islands is going to work uh, with older or distressed flood damaged properties is going to be remaining to be seen. But what I do expect on the barrier islands is you're going to see newer properties or properties that are built above base flood elevation. You're gonna see a lot of demand for those properties because people now know 
that it makes a lot more business sense to have a property that's a bit more elevated, even if they don't like all the stairs. So that's what we saw in Q3. That's where I think we're going in Q4 and beginning next year. Again, a good year, but not a great year. I think all these things need to move on and I'm ready to get going and moving forward and starting the recovery for our town and for the whole Gulf Coast and looking forward to a great selling season in 2025 helping a lot of people start new chapters of life. So again, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you want to have a conversation about Sarasota real estate, please reach out, give me a call, like, and subscribe and appreciate it so much.